Alright guys, how you doing? In my recent AMD Polaris reveal video, I talked a little bit about FinFets and process nodes, how chips are getting smaller over time and how that is slowing down over time. I sort of realised that this is something that I could end up talking about a lot and it is actually quite an interesting topic but it certainly isn't the most easily accessible. Now I know quite a bit about this, I'm no expert by far, however I do read up on it a lot as to me this is something that is really very very interesting. You've got all the big players like Intel, AMD and Nvidia whose companies basically depend on the constant shrinking of transistors. So I'm going to cover a bit about that in this video and hopefully by the end of it you'll all have a pretty good picture of where everything stands and where it's probably going to go in the future. Right, so here's a random image on chip development that I found on the internet. It basically just shows how chip development works in general. You start off by designing the chip and all of these companies do that, yeah. Intel have got their own designers, Nvidia has as well, AMD, any company that's developing microchips, they design them at the start. The part that this is going to be concentrating on is the fabrication of it. And not every company does their own fabrication. Now Intel does, they've got massive amounts of manufacturing prowess, they've got fabs all over the place, in America, in Israel and other places and this is one of the reasons for why they are such a gigantic company. AMD used to manufacture their own chips, however they spun off that part of the business and formed a company called Global Foundries. Nvidia, as far as I'm aware Nvidia has only ever designed and they've always had their chips manufactured elsewhere. So let's actually take a look look at who is now making most of these microchips. Here we can see the top 20 semiconductor sales leaders from 2014-2015 timeframe, Intel sitting at the top as they have been for many years, however they are being clawed back by those beneath them. Samsung in particular are really closing the gap. I'm pretty sure you've heard of Intel and Samsung, however many of you may not have heard of the number 3 company TSMC, which stands for Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. Yet TSMC are the company that makes most of your smartphone chips and almost certainly any graphics card you have ever owned has come out of one of their fabrication plants. Near the bottom you can see Global Foundries which was the AMD spin-off and also another foundry called UMC. The ones with the stars, this is all they do, they simply manufacture microprocessors. So if you actually just look at the kind of money TSMC makes, which is half of what Intel makes, yet all they do is produce microchips. You can probably tell that they're a pretty big company. The interesting companies from the gamer perspective are Intel, Samsung, TSMC, Global Foundries and to a lesser degree UMC as these are the companies that are creating almost all of the gaming chips that we are using. You can see stuff there like Micron, SK Hynix mostly making memory. So I'm pretty sure you've all heard about Moore's Law. A quick look at this line graph shows that around about early 1990s the Intel 486 had 1 million transistors, but it also had a very large feature size of around 6-700 nanometers. Throughout the years you can see more and more transistors being able to be packed into the same sort of area. And now in 2016, we're going to be pushing around 20 billion transistors on the largest graphics chips. And it's been the move to 14 and 16 nanometers that allows for these huge amounts of transistors in a similar area. So what was the point of all this again? Well here is a 300mm silicon wafer and each complete square in this case would be one graphics chip. In this case it would be the Nvidia GTX 960 or 950 which are both based on the same graphics chip. Up at the top you can see that there would be 256 of these chips per wafer. That's assuming that they all work. Maybe around 80 to 90% of them would be working and the other 10% would be duds. So this shows how many 227mm square graphics chips you get on a 300mm wafer. Now again, as I talked about in my AMD Polaris reveal video, the new AMD chip was roughly half the size of Nvidia's GTX 960 chip and you can see that that allows for vastly more chips on the same wafer. Now because this is a new 14 nanometer process, the transistors are smaller, so that allows you to get similar levels of performance in a much smaller chip. However, because it's a newer process, a higher percentage of them will be duds to start off with. It could even be as much as a quarter of them, but in this case that still gives AMD a lot more working chips than what Nvidia has. That is just one aspect of why it is very important to move to the smaller node. 
Smaller transistors also create less heat, less power. It is basically just a win-win situation. The only drawback is that as we get closer and closer to the edge of physics, it gets more and more expensive to shrink transistors ever further. And in actual fact, Moore's law is pretty much coming to an end. Now, you're probably aware that both Intel and AMD make CPUs, or central processing units, and those are the chips that drive the entire PC. You may also be aware that, generally speaking, Intel is regarded as a clear leader in that field. Now, it wasn't always the case though. If you went back 10 years ago, AMD actually had the fastest CPUs, and one of the reasons for that was they were both around about the same sort of feature size, around about the 90 nanometer. However, after that, Intel really started to pull away. And it says 2011 here, but it was more like 2012, 2013 when they released their 22 nanometer CPU known as Ivy Bridge. AMD, on the other hand, have been stuck on 32 and 28 nanometers. They simply weren't able to keep up in that regard. So Intel got all the benefits of the smaller feature size, less power draw. They also have a much better architecture at this point, which is why the gap is so large. Now Intel is on 14 nanometers. They are basically taking the chance to make as much money as possible. This is why you're getting so little increases in performance. Instead of giving us more cores, Intel is giving themselves more money by making smaller CPUs. It has to be said that they are putting bigger graphics onto it, yeah, because graphics are becoming more and more important on the CPU as well. However, generally speaking, every time they shrink in process technology, they bank more money. They have to do it though because it is getting more and more expensive to continue to do that, like I just mentioned. Looking at this one again, this is basically what AMD and Nvidia are faced with right now. Still on 28 nanometers, AMD soon moving to FinFETs, which is 14 nanometers, and Nvidia will also be moving to 14 nanometers. Both Global Foundries and TSMC are moving to FinFETs. As I said before, Global Foundries was AMD's spin-off company, so AMD can use Global Foundries to make their CPUs and GPUs. They also still use TSMC, however, as does Nvidia. And very recently, AMD signed a deal with Samsung to make more chips at Samsung's foundry. Nvidia has already been making chips at Samsung's foundry, but not their high-end graphics cards. But generally speaking, up until this point, AMD and Nvidia have been using the same company, TSMC, to make their graphics cards. And this is why the graphics card market is much more exciting, much more interesting, because it comes down to how well each company can design their GPUs, as opposed to what we see in CPUs with Intel having a massive lead in their process technology. So now that AMD and Nvidia will be moving on to 14 nanometers, does that mean that they are finally at parity with Intel? Well, not quite. The reason for this is that TSMC's and Samsung's 14, 16 nanometers are not exactly the same as Intel's. And this image here shows what is going on. TSMC's 16 FinFET is actually just the same as their 20 nanometers, except with FinFETs. It's the same size, but the FinFETs allow for much better power characteristics. Samsung's is slightly smaller, but you can see that it is still quite a way away from Intel's true 14 nanometers, and it just sort of shows the kind of lead that Intel has. Although the lead is slipping, they still do hold that lead. And we won't see parity until TSMC and Samsung bring out their own 10 nanometers, which is actually probably going to be around the same size as Intel's 14. So this is actually pretty important for AMD. Although the gap will be closing a lot when they release Zen at the end of the year, there is still a process technology gap there to Intel that won't be easy to overcome. They do have other advantages, however, but I'm not going to go into that here. Right, so I'm just going to wrap this one up by having a quick look at all of the companies discussed. Intel clearly way out ahead on their own, however they are on their own and this is making it more and more difficult for them to continue to stay ahead. They don't have masses of extra money coming into the fab, so Intel really needs to sell a lot of their own CPUs in order to stay ahead. However, the PC market is pretty stagnant and has been for many years, and this means that as the nodes continue to shrink, the amount of money that Intel has to spend on it is less and less with each generation. And while they used to be able to shrink every two years, their 10 nanometer node has been pushed back and it is going to be three years. Like I said, Moore's Law is coming to an end. TSMC pretty much being bankrolled by some very large companies like Apple and Qualcomm. They have got a lot of manufacturing clout and are by far and away the largest of what is called the pure play foundries. 
they have, or they used to have, a very good relationship with Nvidia. So this stands Nvidia in good stead going forward. They also have a pretty good relationship with AMD. However, AMD did create their only real competition in global foundries. But more importantly, TSMC now are very much focused around Apple and both Nvidia and AMD have to wait in line before they are able to use the newest technology. This is probably going to be the case going forward, but TSMC looked like a very strong company. Last year, Samsung came out of nowhere with their 14 nanometers. It was a real surprise. People were expecting to see TSMC's 14 nanometer or 16 nanometer first. But that didn't happen and it was a big shock when Apple went to Samsung for the A9 contract. You may have heard of the chipgate thing. Basically speaking, Apple decided to dual source their A9 chip. That's for the iPhone 6S. They decided to dual source the A9 chip at both TSMC and Samsung and supposedly there was a difference in the performance and in the battery life depending on which chip you got. You can see here that Samsung's chips are a little bit smaller than TSMC's. This is the difference between 14 and 16 nanometers. Maybe the TSMC chips have better characteristics at higher power loads. That one was inconclusive. Apple says there's pretty much no difference between Samsung's 14 nanometer and TSMC's 16 nanometer, but they would say that. They've signed a very good deal with Global Foundries. Basically speaking, Samsung licensed out their 14 nanometer technology to Global Foundries and now they also have AMD set to build chips in their fabs in 2017. They don't have anything like the amount of capacity as TSMC, however, and are much more focused on creating chips for their own products. Global Foundries, as mentioned, was spun off from AMD in 2009 and they've really struggled to keep up with the big guys like TSMC. They've had one or two failed nodes. I mean, this stuff's really difficult, as you can imagine. They are being bankrolled by the Abu Dhabi government. However, this is coming to an end as well due to the oil price crash. And from what I've heard, Abu Dhabi would be quite happy to sell them off. There's a fair chance that they may be sold off to some Chinese company in the future. They have a contract with AMD which basically forces AMD to make chips with Global Foundries. That would be great if Global Foundries was making good chips, however, recently they haven't been doing that. The Samsung deal should really help AMD in a big way, however. This is a company that's well worth paying attention to, however, they probably will be sold. Right, I'm going to bring this one to an end. With an overall summary, in 2016 we're going to be seeing some major improvements in performance, both from AMD and Nvidia. We should see a huge improvement in AMD CPUs towards the end of the year, as they finally get off that ancient 32 28 nanometer node that they've been stuck on for the past four years, and FinFET should give them a big boost as well against Intel. So this one was a little bit different from what I would normally do. So let me know what you think about it. I can do more stuff in a similar vein. It's definitely a bit of a tangent, although it's still obviously related to gaming in a big way. For me though, it's just a fascinating subject that I thought I would share with you. I'll catch you later, guys.